Welcome back to this module on strings. In this part, we'll cover how to process strings. The first common operation on strings is to iterate over them and process them character by character. It's pretty straightforward to use a for loop, just as we did with arrays, and to use the string length function to bound the loop. However, there are generally better ways that we'll also look at. Let's demonstrate each one. First, let's write the straightforward code. We'll simply iterate over each character and print it out one to a line. We bound the loop using strlen, the string length function. But now let's think about how the string length function actually works. It probably looks something like this. There are 12 ASCII text characters before the null terminating character. A naive way of looking at this code would say that the string length function is actually being called on every single iteration of this for loop. In other words, if there are 12 characters in it, this while loop within the string length function will execute 12 times for each of the 12 times that the for loop executes, giving us a total of 144 times that a loop actually iterates over a character. In fact, it's so commonly inefficient that most compilers will actually compile that away and instead do something like the following. In other words, the strlen call within the function will be moved to before the function so that it's only called once. Again, most compilers will do that automatically if they can, but it still means that we're running over the string twice, once to count how many characters there are, and then a second time to process each character. We can optimize this even more. by combining the two ideas into one. And now we're only ever iterating over the string once, and only once. We may also want to process or manipulate individual characters. The C type library provides many useful functions for processing individual characters. All of these functions actually operate on integer types, the integer values corresponding to their ASCII table values. However, they can easily and automatically be typecasted to their char types. We won't cover all of the functions, but some of the most useful ones include isDigit, which returns true if the given character is a digit character, 0 through 9. isLower and isUpper return true if the given character is a lowercase or uppercase letter. isSpace returns true for any whitespace character, including space, tab, new line, etc. Two lower and two upper actually return the ASCII character value, which is the lower or uppercase version of the given character. If it's punctuation or numerical, it just returns the same value. Let's demonstrate how to use some of them by writing a code snippet to count the number of spaces and white space characters in a string. Here I've got a different string with some spaces and line characters and a tab. Let's create variables to keep track of the number of spaces and the number of white spaces. Now let's use the same for loop from before, where we iterate over each character only once. Now to count the number of white space characters, I'll simply use the C type library's isSpace function. Now if we're going to do that, we need to include it. Now I need to check to see if the character is an actual space. For that, I can just use the equality operator. Now 
After we're done processing character by character, we'll print them out. There are indeed six space characters, as well as 10 total white space characters, which include the spaces, the endline characters, of which there are three, and the tab character. Often you will have the need to compare the contents stored in strings rather than just individual characters. You cannot use the equality operator to do this, however. An expression like S1 is equal to S2 where S1 and S2 are strings would end up comparing the memory address of the two pointers rather than their actual contents. Instead, you're gonna to need to use a function, strcmp, available in the string library, short for string comparison to do this. This function returns an integer which has the following contract. It returns something negative if str1 comes before str2, that is the two strings are in order. It returns zero if they're equal, that is they have the same contents. And it returns something positive if str1 comes after str2, or another way of looking at it is if they're out of order. The ordering of strings is determined by the ASCII text table values. So numbers come before letters, uppercase, come, uppercase letters come before lowercase, etc. Let's take a look at a demonstration. First of all, I'm going to show that using the equality operator is not going to work. Conceptually, these two strings are the same thing. Let's run this. It comes back that the strings are not equal, even though they have the same contents. That's because A and B are being stored at different memory locations. Equals equals is comparing those memory locations, seeing that they're different, and so prints the second print statement in the else condition. Now let's demonstrate how to do this correctly. This returns zero, because the contents stored in the first string are the same as the contents stored in the second string. Let's go ahead and pluralize the second one. Does apple come before apples? It returns something negative, so they're in order. Apple comes before apples, because it's the shorter string, and all the characters match up until the last string. Now conceptually, what's actually happening here is that there is a null terminating character at the end of Apple, which has an ASCII text value of zero, which comes before anything else, including lowercase s, which has a higher ASCII text value. Let me go ahead and switch them around. We should expect something positive here, and we get positive one. Don't read anything into the magnitude of that number. There's no guarantee on the value that it returns, there's only a guarantee on whether or not it's positive, negative, or zero, depending on the relative ordering of its arguments. What about uppercase letters? Remember that uppercase letters come before lowercase letters, so they're in order. It's not dictionary ordering. These are in order, even though Z comes before A. It's according to the ASCII text table, also called lexiographic ordering. All the capital letters come before the lowercase letters. So capital Z comes before lowercase A. We should expect something negative here. And what happens when we compare numbers? Conceptually, 99 comes before 100, but remember, it's lexiographic. It only compares up to the first character, seeing that they're different, one comes before nine, and ignores the rest. So we get something negative. Now there are some alternative variations on strcnp. 
There's strncmp. It's like the byte delimited versions of string cop and strcat. You provide a third argument, telling it only to compare up to the first five characters. In this case, apple and apples are the same with respect to the first five characters. So it'll come out that they're equal, returning zero. Another variation is str case CMP, which provides a case insensitive version of this. Normally, we would expect this to return something negative because capital A comes before lowercase a. But by comparing ignoring the case, we get that they're equal. It is possible to reference a substring of another string. That is to reference part of another string that begins at an index other than zero. Let's take a look at this. Let me first create a string. Now, Margaret's last name begins at the 10th character, or equivalently index nine. Names of nine is just a plain old char element. What we want is a pointer to it in order to get a char star. So we can put an ampersand in front of it to get the memory address of the string starting at index nine. Now it's important to understand that this is not a separate string. Margaret Hamilton is one string stored in memory. Last name is simply a pointer that points to a substring in the middle of that existing string. If we change it via the pointer, so in that sense, it's a shallow copy. Changes to one. Will affect the other. We've already formatted strings with the percent %s placeholder using printf to print to the standard output. We've also seen how to convert from strings to numbers using a to i and a to f. It's also possible to convert numbers back into formatted strings. Essentially, we'll print to a string instead of printing to the standard output. To do this, we use sprintf, which is exactly like printf in its functionality. It places the result into a string instead of the standard output. Let's demonstrate how to use it. First, I'm going to create a buffer that's big enough to hold what I'm going to try to print. We'll create a string and some numbers. Now we could print all this information out to the standard output using the following. And it would work. But what I want to do is I want to store that result into S. So I use sprintf instead and provide a new first argument the string where you want the result to be placed. This time it doesn't print anything. But once it's stored in a string, then we can print it or do anything else that we want to it. As always, it's your responsibility to make sure that this buffer is large enough to hold what you're trying to put into it. If it's not, If it's not, then you'll corrupt your own memory as we did here. The state string got overwritten, and so it doesn't print on line 14. Finally, when processing strings, you will often have to deal with collections of strings or arrays of strings. In C, arrays of strings are simply two-dimensional arrays of char elements. Each row is a string that must be null terminated. Each row or string does not need to be the same size, however. It's a simple and easy extension of our two-dimensional arrays, which we've already covered. Let's demonstrate a simple example. 
Now I've brought in our deep copy string function from before. Creating the array of pointers is straightforward. Here I've created an array that can hold five strings or five rows of char elements. Let's go ahead and set those using the copy string function. Each one of the strings or each one of the rows is a different length. And so that's an array of strings.